Something is making me create this work from beyond the grave now, as both my parents have passed away. The question that comes to mind is how, as a photographer, as an artist, do you tell the story of those who have given you life? The title of my work is Supna, Dreams of Our Fathers. The word Supna in the Punjabi language means dream and the project tries to embody through a series of images the story of my parents' migration from the northeastern region of India called the Punjab to the city of Wolverhampton in the UK. The body of work has been in development now for a few years and is a long-term project and was initially inspired by looking through my own family photographs from albums at home. And currently the work has developed enough and sits into four distinct photographic categories were distinct cultural items used as references to communicate their dreams, hopes and fears through the project. So these portraits have always been the centerpiece at home, hung up in expensive frames, and certainly during my childhood I was mesmerized by their filmic look and hand-tinted quality, and they've just been so very beautifully posed. People always ask, was there something special growing up as a British-born second-generation Indian in Wolverhampton? And I always reply, no. It was no different because everybody where I lived was Indian, so nothing special. I lived in a very densely populated area for Punjabis in the city in Wolverhampton, and Punjabi was my first language. Things only got interesting when I started school and I heard the deep black country accent, which means, how are you? That frightened me to death. Escapism took form in watching three hour long Bollywood films on VHS cassette tapes at the weekends. My happiest years growing up was spent at home with the family. There was a right wing politician by the name of Enoch Powell, who one day called the media in Birmingham to attention and said, I'm going to make a speech and it's going to go up like a rocket and where all rockets come down, this one is staying up. And so the media coined that speech, the rivers of blood speech. What he was trying to communicate was that in 20 years time, ethnicities would rise up and begin to destroy the communities that he lived amongst. In terms of imagery, I view Enoch Powell like a predatory tiger. And I see him like a Shere Khan character in the Jungle Book, prowling about the city of Wolverhampton seeking to devour the migrant from the black country landscape. Fortunately, none of his predictions from his rivers of blood speech came true, and people have lived in relative harmony, and the vast majority of migrants have integrated to life in the city. The next part of photographs in my series has to be more intimately about my father and his passion in life and dreams for us. This is probably my favorite image of him. And then I drew an astronaut's helmet around him because that's how I want to remember him. He didn't ever get to be an astronaut or go into space. He reserved those dreams for us. The furthest he got was from India to the UK. But he does embody the astronaut's sense of adventure. And like the astronaut who can't survive without their spacesuit against the harsh realities of space, my father needs a covering from the hardships of life in Wolverhampton, especially during the formative years of migration, having to learn a new language, cultural adaptations, working in harsh conditions, dealing with racial hatred, bringing up a family. So he has to put on protection, metaphorically speaking, which kept him going, which was his dream for us. It gave him that layer of determination. With coverings of belief and optimism around him, for the future hope of our family. Along with other members of the Punjabi community, my parents also held 
esoteric and religious beliefs. And I remember in my early years, my parents as Hindus would travel to see astrologers and get their charts read about their future life. And black magic was also practiced by members of the community through the appropriation of blessings and curses. Later on, my mother converted to Christianity and she held the biblical belief that although the sun and the moon were created to give off light, they were also there for signs. One of these signs she points to is a series of blood moons that occurred in 2015 and 2016 called the Tetrad. The last time that there was a Tetrad of blood moons was in 1965 to 1966 at the time of my parents' migration and they were seen as harbingers and if there are parallels I suppose I can only draw between the time experienced by my parents' generation and today by such things that are happening now that are similar like the rise of populism influx of mass migration, there's been Brexit, economic confusion, and of course we have the virus. In the autumn of 2016, I remember standing outside and during this time witnessing the sky had gone very dark and the sun turned blood red. And the following day it was in all the headlines in the main media and the most used hashtag on social media was followed by the word apocalypse. What I find interesting now is that my daughter Naomi, pictured here with the dog Poppy, has a strange fascination with space herself and you can see she wears a rocket t-shirt. I recently also stumbled on her drawings that she'd been making at school and so I figured out that some part of the dream my father had still lives on in her. So I'm looking forward to the future with optimism as I'm very interested to see how my father's dream develops further in her as well.